Hello everyone. In this video I will discuss one of the films called The Menu, and never forget that I always pray for you and your family to be happy and healthy always. One day, a handsome and wealthy young man named Taylor is seen standing at the edge of the dock with his date Erin. They are about to go to a luxurious restaurant on a remote island called Hawthorne, which Taylor had reserved a year ago. As the boat arrives to take them there, nine other wealthy individuals also show up, including a food critic named Lillian Bloom with her editor Fieldman, three rich businessmen named Brace, Soren and Dave, a fairly famous old movie star named Diaz, accompanied by his assistant Felicity, and another wealthy couple named Richard and Anne, which surprises Erin, as she seems to recognize Richard. On the boat, the guests are served a travel dish consisting of local raw clams with lemon caviar and oyster leaves, making the trip appear quite delightful. Upon arriving at Hawthorne Island, they are greeted by the head server named Elsa, who momentarily stops Taylor because he did not arrive with Mrs. Westervelt as expected, but with someone not on the list. Additionally, Erin introduces herself to Elsa as Margot. Despite this, Elsa does not make a big issue of it and proceeds to give the guests a tour of the island, starting with the place where they harvest oysters, the smoke cabin for fermentation and the restaurant staff's living quarters, which Elsa describes as a family-like environment where they work more than eight hours each day. After the tour, Elsa leads the guests to the restaurant, passing by a house belonging to the head chef that no one is allowed to visit. Entering the open kitchen-style restaurant, the guests can see the staff preparing their meals, and they notice an elderly woman sitting alone. Elsa also instructs the guests not to photograph any dishes because the beauty of the restaurant's culinary creations lies in their ephemeral nature. Elsa then informs the head chef, Chef Slowick, about Taylor arriving with someone not on the guest list. It turns out that a year ago, Taylor reserved two seats at the restaurant for his girlfriend, Westervelt, but their relationship ended. To avoid cancelling his reservation, Taylor brought Erin, who is now introduced as Margot. Although Chef Slowick seems displeased with Margot's presence, he allows her to stay. Soon, the guests are served the first course, an amuse-bouche, consisting of pickles, watermelon, cucumber and milk snow with thin slices of charcoal. The dish is quite enjoyable, making the guests feel comfortable as if they are in a typical high-end restaurant and Taylor secretly takes a photo of it. After some time, the first main course is prepared. Before serving, Chef Slowick addresses the guests, asking them not only to eat but to taste, enjoy and experience every flavor that enters their mouths. He gives an extensive explanation of the upcoming dish and its meaning. Although Margot does not understand the chef's monologue, Taylor is moved to tears by it. Taylor also secretly photographs the first main course, called The Island, even though everyone else is in awe of the dish. However, Margot feels that the food is just ordinary. Right after the first course is finished, Chef Slowick presents the second course, called The Breadless Bread Plate which consists of six different bread sauces, served in very small portions without any bread. Chef Slowick believes that bread is a commoner's food, and since his guests are not commoners, they do not deserve bread. This decision sparks a debate among some guests who find it ridiculous to eat bread sauces without bread. The three businessmen even demand bread, claiming they are friends with someone who funds the restaurant. Despite this, Elsa refuses to provide bread, insisting they must eat what is served. Margot also dislikes this concept and refuses to eat, drawing Slowick's attention. He approaches her to ask if everything is all right. A brief argument ensues between the chef and Margot, who continues to refuse the dish. Disappointed, Slowick walks away from the table and approaches the elderly woman, who is revealed to be his mother. Meanwhile, Margot glances at Richard, causing Anne to become suspicious. Richard nervously denies knowing Margot, trying to dispel Anne's doubts. A short while later, Slowick introduces the next dish, which he calls Memory, while recounting a personal story of stabbing his father's thigh with scissors when his drunken father attempted to kill his mother with a telephone cord. As he tells this story, the dish is served, shocking the guests because their tortillas have images printed on them. The tortilla of the critic Lillian contains an image of a restaurant that closed down after receiving a bad review from her. 
Diaz's tortilla features a picture from the movie Dr. Sunshine, which was his biggest failure. The tortillas of the three businessmen contain details of their illegal bank accounts. This revelation angers the businessmen, and they threaten to shut down the restaurant unless Elsa explains how the restaurant obtained such secret information. However, Elsa refuses to speak and leaves the table. Anne's tortilla shows an image of Richard with an unknown young woman, which Richard dismisses, claiming he knows nothing about the picture. Tyler's tortilla has a picture of him secretly photographing food in the restaurant, causing him to panic. He considers going to apologize to Slowick, but Margot suggests returning the food instead. This idea angers Tyler, who reminds Margot that he paid for the dinner, frustrating her and leading her to leave for the restroom. In the restroom, Margot is unexpectedly approached by Slowick, who questions her identity, noting she shouldn't be there. But Erin insists on her identity as Margot before leaving the restroom. Shortly after, Slowick introduces his protege, Jeremy, to the guests, praising him briefly for his discipline. However, the praise quickly turns into a scornful remark, with Slowick declaring that Jeremy will never become a great chef because he only aspires to be a substitute. Immediately following this insult, Jeremy does something unexpected. Naturally, this incident caused everyone except Tyler to panic and wonder whether it was real or just part of the show. Slowick quickly affirmed that this was indeed part of the menu and the performance, as the next dish, called The Mess, was served to the guests. Richard, who insisted on leaving the restaurant, was politely asked by Elsa to return to his seat. When he ignored her request, some restaurant staff restrained him and cut off his ring finger. This shocking event, once again, left the guests, except Tyler, stunned and increasingly aware that something was seriously wrong with the restaurant. However, some guests still believed it might be part of the performance. Shortly afterward, Margot was called to the kitchen to meet Slowick, who again asked her about her true identity. Slowick pressed her to be honest, explaining that the entire evening and the guest list had been meticulously planned and Margot's unplanned presence was disrupting everything. He then revealed that everyone in the restaurant was going to die that night, giving Margot 15 minutes to decide whether she would die with the staff or as a guest. This revelation terrified Margot, who returned to her table in tears. Meanwhile, one of the businessmen attempted to escape by breaking a window, but the glass was too strong to be shattered with a chair, leaving him with no choice but to return to his seat. Before the next dish, called Palate Cleanser, was served, Slowick allowed the guests to ask questions. Several guests took this opportunity to inquire why Slowick was doing all of this. Here, it was finally revealed that several reasons had driven Slowick to become disillusioned with running his restaurant and serving his culinary art to guests who couldn't appreciate it. Food critic Lillian Bloom was invited because she had ruined many restaurant businesses with her harsh reviews, and her editor was equally guilty for supporting those negative critiques. Richard and Anne, although regular patrons, never truly appreciated the food, and Slowick bet that Richard couldn't name a single dish he had been served over their 11 visits. Slowick also introduced the guests to the restaurant's angel investor, who was tied up above the water. This man had an unhealthy obsession with the restaurant's profits and repeatedly belittled the painstakingly crafted menu. To demonstrate his disdain, Slowick drowned the investor in front of the restaurant guests. Meanwhile, the 15 minutes given to Margot had expired and she was brought back to Slowick's office to make her decision. There, Margot revealed her true identity as Erin, a call girl hired by Tyler to accompany him to the restaurant. It was also disclosed that Richard was a former client who had paid her well in the past, explaining their odd behavior. Hearing this, Slowick decided to place Erin with the restaurant staff, since she did not belong to the wealthy group of troublesome guests. Slowick also confessed that he had long lost his passion for cooking for people and deeply missed that feeling. After the conversation, the guests were directed outside to enjoy the next course. At the entrance of the restaurant, Slowick introduced his female sous chef, Catherine, who would present the next dish called Man's Folly. Catherine shared her past experiences with Slowick before stabbing him in the thigh with a pair of scissors, another part of the menu and performance. Following this, 
Slowick gave the male guests 45 seconds to try to escape before the staff would start pursuing them. Meanwhile, the female guests were led back inside by Catherine to enjoy the man's folly dish, during which it was revealed that the plan to kill everyone that night was actually Catherine's idea. Unfortunately, the male guests were eventually caught one by one and brought back to the restaurant. The last man to be caught was given a special dish called Passard Egg. Once the men rejoined the group at the dining tables, Slowick approached Tyler and demanded he reveal the real reason why he was at the restaurant. To everyone's shock, Tyler confessed that he had long desired to dine at the restaurant because Slowick was his favorite chef. When Tyler got the opportunity, he accepted it despite knowing that everyone would die that night. This explained why Tyler was unfazed by the horrific events and thoroughly enjoyed his meal. Erin, furious upon learning this, attempted to attack Tyler. After this revelation, Slowick sweetly asked Tyler, who claimed to understand cooking, to prepare the next dish in front of the guests. Nervously, Tyler complied and quickly made a dish that Slowick dubbed Tyler's Bullshit. Upon tasting it, Slowick declared the dish terrible and whispered something in Tyler's ear, prompting Tyler to leave and commit suicide. Following this, Erin, now considered part of the staff, was instructed by Slowick to fetch a barrel from the smokehouse to prepare the next course. Meanwhile, Diaz mustered the courage to ask Slowick why he was being punished. Slowick revealed that he had seen Diaz's movie, Dr. Sunshine, and hated it. The film ruined Slowick's mood during a long holiday and haunted him ever since. Instead of fetching the barrel, Erin sneaked into Slowick's private house and was shocked to find that the rooms there mirrored those in the restaurant. As she approached a locked silver door, Elsa suddenly appeared with a knife, planning to kill Erin, believing Erin was there to replace her as the head waitress. A fight ensued, and Erin accidentally killed Elsa. She then took the keys from Elsa and entered Slowick's private room. Inside, Erin found photos, newspaper articles, and various awards Slowick had received over the years. Among all the photos, she found one of a young Slowick smiling widely while working at a fast food restaurant, where he was an expert at making American cheeseburgers and had even won the Employee of the Month award. In the room, Erin also discovered a radio, which she used to alert the Coast Guard about the situation at the Hawthorne restaurant, before returning to the restaurant with the barrel Slowick had requested. Afterward, Slowick explained to Erin that he did all this because a chef should serve delicious food to customers. However, Slowick realized that the guests did not want food. They wanted an experience. Consequently, many great chefs lost their passion for their work due to the pressure, leading to the neglect of culinary art. Not long after, everyone was startled by the arrival of a Coast Guard boat. Realizing this, Slowick warned all the guests not to say anything and instructed his staff to cover up any evidence of the crimes. When the Coast Guard officer entered the restaurant and stated he had received a report about murders, Slowick managed to convince him that everything was fine. The officer recognized Diaz as a film star and asked for his autograph. Diaz, pleased, discreetly signaled for help instead of simply signing, prompting the officer to draw his gun on Slowick. This momentarily relieved the guests as they thought they were saved. Unfortunately, it was revealed that the officer's gun was actually a lighter, and the entire staff of the restaurant laughed because the Coast Guard officer was actually part of the restaurant staff, pretending to be a Coast Guard. Moreover, Slowick had already known that Erin had entered his private room to seek help via the radio. As the final dish was being prepared, Erin suddenly clapped her hands, drawing everyone's attention to her. There, Erin immediately revealed that she didn't like the food served and wanted to return it to the kitchen. This naturally angered Slowick, who demanded Erin to explain what she didn't like about the food. Erin explained that the chef seemed to derive pleasure from food, and everything served felt more like an intellectual exercise than someone sitting down and enjoying a meal. Moreover, all the food felt uninspired, not only making it taste bad, but also leaving Erin feeling bored and still hungry. This statement immediately triggered Slowick's ego, who then asked Erin what dish she wanted. Taking this opportunity, Erin requested Slowick to make a traditional American cheeseburger with wavy cut French fries. This request immediately brought a smile to Slowick's face as he remembered his youth. 
Soon after the burger was served on the table, Erin took one bite and appeared quite pleased, praising its truly delicious taste, making her feel the happiest she had ever been. However, because Slowick had served more food than Erin could eat, Erin asked Slowick if she could take the leftover burger and fries home. Surprisingly, Slowick agreed to wrap up the burger and even gave Erin a goodie bag. Erin then left $10 on the table before leaving the restaurant without being stopped by Slowick. After Erin left, Slowick immediately expressed his gratitude to the guests and revealed that each of them represented the destruction of his art and life, allowing them to be part of his final masterpiece. Along with this, the staff decorated the restaurant and adorned each guest with marshmallow suits and chocolate hats. Finally, the last dish, called s'mores, was served. This dish contained marshmallows, chocolate, biscuit crumbs, guests, staff, chef, and the Hawthorne restaurant, all burnt together. Meanwhile, Erin, who managed to reach the other side of the island by boat, watched the beauty of the burning restaurant while enjoying her cheeseburger. And that's it for the story series of this film. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to support this channel by subscribe, like, and share. See you in the next video. Goodbye.